This is one of the world's most significant construction projects. A $7.5 billion feat of engineering will transform travel access across an entire continent. And it's happening here. Want to learn more about this new mega tunnel? Then stay till the end of the video to gather knowledge about it. And remember to subscribe to our channel for such updates and hit the like button. An unassuming German vacation island in a secluded part of the Baltic Sea will undergo a radical makeover due to the construction of one of the most significant infrastructure projects in the world. The Fehmarn Belt is a stretch of water approximately 20 kilometers in length and separates the southern coast of Denmark from the island of Fehmarn, which is located close off the coast of the German mainland. Construction has begun on a tunnel connecting the two countries, and it serves as the missing link in constructing a transcontinental highway. This tunnel will facilitate the movement of hundreds of thousands of passengers annually and produce billions of dollars in revenue. The Trans-European Transport Network is a collection of roadways, railroads, and maritime lanes connecting Europe's regions. The ScanMed Corridor, which stretches for 5,000 kilometers from Malta in the Mediterranean to Finland's ice tundra, is an essential route. It travels over icy waters and mountain rocks across the Alps. Suppose you take the path that goes north via Germany, making a loop over Denmark that is approximately 150 kilometers long is necessary. You will return to the Fehmarn Bell. Now, let's make sure we're on the same page. There is a transportation route that goes from near the African coast to the Arctic Circle, and it includes some of the most iconic engineering in the world, such as the Brenner Base Tunnel and the Great Belt Bridge. However, a slight stretch of water in northern Europe is enough to create a detour that is the size of a country. The Fehmarn Belt has been a challenge for many talented engineers worldwide for over a century, even though it is insignificant to this point. Let's talk about the Oresund. The Oresund Bridge is a remarkable example of one of those uncommon achievements in public construction. It is a megastructure in which architecture and engineering work together in perfect harmony to produce a genuinely iconic structure. The crossing, which connects Denmark and the city of Malmo in southern Sweden, was made famous by the play The Bridge, which was released in 2011, and it was during the planning stages of this crossing Sweden had a significant concept. The only way to go from Sweden to Central Europe is to train to Malmö. This will take you across the Urusund Bridge to Copenhagen, where you will change trains to board another train that will get you down to Hamburg in Germany. Significantly on a train traveling at high speed, the trip takes roughly five and a half hours. Traveling by freight train is even more time-consuming. Germany is Sweden's second-largest export market because of this fact alone. The government of Sweden recognized a potential time-saving shortcut at the Fehmarn Belt, which led to negotiations with the government of Denmark, which resulted in the following agreement. The Swedes would assist in the construction of the Urusund Bridge if Denmark agreed to investigate the possibility of constructing a fixed link at the Fehmarn Belt. That wasn't as outrageous as you would imagine, thank goodness. Since the 19th century, there has been talking about constructing a railway between Hamburg and Copenhagen, quaintly dubbed the Vogelfluglinie, which translates to bird flight line. However, this plan came into action in the 1960s when a bridge was constructed to cross the short stretch of water known as the Fehmarn Sound between Fehmarn and mainland Germany. After then, the railway was extended to a new ferry port at Puttgarten, which brought trains up to the water's edge. After this incredible feat, the trains were placed onto ferries, transported across the Fehmarn Belt, and continued to Denmark. The whole process moved at a snail's pace. The diesel trains that operated the route were slower than we have today, and the ferry ride alone was almost 45 minutes. We are delighted that this information continues to pique your curiosity. We encourage you to remain tuned for further details. We tried to compile all of this one-of-a-kind research, and we would greatly appreciate it if you hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. After that, there was talk for many years about upgrading the route to a fixed link, but things got serious when Sweden issued a challenge. In 2008, the governments of Denmark and Germany signed a pact to begin construction on the Fehmarn Belt fixed link. 
The proposed crossing would have a highway with four lanes and two rail lines, one serving high-speed passenger trains operating the other performing freight trains. The entire operation would be financed by Denmark, which would act as the entity in charge of managing the onshore enterprises and collecting the tolls. Let's talk about history. Building a bridge was the most straightforward approach to take. Back in the 1990s, feasibility studies were carried out, and as the construction of the Urusund Bridge demonstrated, Denmark is quite capable of constructing such structures. They conceived the idea of constructing a cable-stayed bridge around 3 kilometers long and sat about 65 meters above the ocean, so ships could still travel over it. The cable-stayed design was comparable to that of the Orisund Bridge, with the primary distinction being that it would be three times as long. This was the point at which the issues started to arise. Even though it is not a wild and dangerous ocean, the Feymarn Belt is very awkward. It has a length of just under 20 kilometers, a width of just under 20 kilometers, and in some parts, it has a rather startling depth. Additionally, the soil conditions are not ideal for building on. The bridge would have needed spans of almost 700 meters, longer than any road rail bridge, to traverse the Feymarn Belt. Why are IMTs a good option? Instead of boring through the soil, IMTs comprise prefabricated concrete elements. Once made, these are taken out to a trench dug in the seabed, sunk, and sealed together. Once laid, the whole thing is covered with earth, and you have a tunnel. An IMT is an excellent solution for a place like the Feymarn Belt. It's shallower than a board tunnel, so trains have no problem passing through and are much cheaper. You avoid the technical complexities of building a bridge, which poses no risk to shipping once it's complete. After a tunnel element is built, it is rolled out of the plant and hauled to an extensive dry dock, where it is floated and taken to the sea to dig the trench. Flooded ballast tanks drop the 73,000-ton concrete tube elements to the ocean floor, where winches guide them within 15 millimeters of their targets. After all the details are in place, the trench is backfilled, and the tunnel is protected by gravel, which nature ultimately covers with sand. Installing a road and railway through the tunnel structure is the next hurdle. Before opening in 2029, the tunnel will have ventilation, support, and surveillance systems. When completed, thousands of automobiles and hundreds of trains will use this tunnel daily. The project costs 7.5 billion US dollars. Half a billion dollars comes from EU subsidies and the rest from Danish state loans. That sums up the current infrastructure. These initiatives are difficult and controversial to build, but they change our lives. The new Feymarn Belt Tunnel will affect millions on this continent for decades. Feymarn AS Technical Director Jens Ole Koslund says its construction controversies and outstanding engineering will be forgotten. Now that the topic has ended, you must have learned much about this mega tunnel. If you liked the video, remember to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for further updates. Tell us how it went, and if you have any suggestions, please include them. We are interested in hearing what you expect from our content.